Hey, what's up guys? In this video, we're gonna talk about tools and tricks and tips that we've all learned from different trades and we've now incorporated it into what we do. Uh, recently, about a week ago, the Toolbox Buzz crew got together with Chris Ermides from This Old House. He's actually the editor of pro to pro which talks to pros and about pros, brings more information to the pros, um, and he's gonna be bringing that to you guys soon in, in, on his channels. Uh, but we got together, we talked about tips and tricks. We, uh, we did a dual Instagram, Facebook feed. It was a one hour long feed, and what I've done here is I've broken it down into two uh, three different 10 minute videos with some editing. Um, it's not high end editing guys, it's just our conversations with some uh, B-roll of some of the stuff that we talked about. I hope you enjoy it. Let's get started. Yeah. So yeah. Chris, you're up, next. Tip. So another tip, uh, I don't know, This this I found this to be really interesting. I um, One of the things I got to do recently was spend some time looking over the shoulder of an electrician at the at a This Old House project. That must be and fun. I, and watched him, and I actually shot a video. <laughs> it's, it was pretty cool. It was cool. Um, for you, not him. For you, not him. <laughs> so Chris, did you have garlic last night? <laughs> <laughs> so, so one of the things that, um, you know, I shot a video of it and I actually posted it on our site, but I watched him put an outlet together and he said that in, in a, on a good day when an editor isn't like bugging him, looking right. over his shoulder and asking him a million questions, he can install one of these in less than a minute. That's that's crazy. That's wow. pretty yeah. fast, right? Yeah. So watching him, his, his movements were seamless. There was mm -hmm. no, yeah. and one of the things that he did is he had actually a pair of, a pair of needle nose pliers that are also um, wire strippers and uh, and cutters, and he just, what, you know, I've seen it, I've taken apart enough of the outlets, I know people do this, but to watch him do it, he just took and and f rounded the, you know, rounded the uh, the wire around the, the this, I do that. These needle yep. nose yeah. pliers yep. are designed just for that, right. like I do exactly that. Yep. the right size. And then when he when he put it around here, he actually well I didn't I didn't strip it enough here, but pinch it? he pinched it. Yeah, yeah, I do that too. See yeah, you guys. That. All right, so <laughs> yeah. it's, not, it's not really a great tip, but the yeah. other no, the other thing tip. the other thing that I that I noticed he so he his um, his battery died on his on his drill, and it was the it was a madhouse on, on that day, and we couldn't like. We had to keep moving, so because they were filming upstairs, so he couldn't go get his drill. So he had a uh, slotted screwdriver in his in his pouch. He pulled it out, and the way he he locked it into the screw. You know how when you use screw, slotted screws, they slide, they all slide the off all the yeah. time. Yeah. yeah. Well, he turned this. He turned it just enough, and then he took his thumb and he sort of locked it in. Mm -hmm. So that as he kept pressure. moving, he yeah. kept pressure up so against pressure it. He, the, mm -hmm. If you watch the video, you'll see he 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 spun that screw in so, so fast. That nice. principle works That's the cool. same way when you're driving with a with an impact driver or a drill yeah. with a bit in it, mm -hmm. and you put pressure into the bit mm -hmm. to back it out. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, oh, yeah. sometimes if it's yeah. too loose, it'll spin and strip. Yeah. That's the same principle. It's yes. great. I never yeah. thought about doing it with a hand screwdriver. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, and I've started actually when I'm setting screws, especially if I got like a longer bit or a longer screw, like I'll put my, my thumb, like I'll, I'll, ha I'll be holding the screw and then I'll kind of like get another part of my hand or my finger on there just to around support. It? Just not even around it, just to support it because that stabilizes it while I'm driving so it doesn't wobble off and, you know, damage the workpiece or whatever. That's cool. Yeah. That's yeah. cool. Same thing, basically. Yeah. That's one thing I love about stuff like this is that when you learn one tip from one trade, you can often take it into another yeah, trade. Yeah, that's true. Like watch another guy. Right, really right. Yeah. Yeah. A lot yeah. of the tips cross trades too. Yeah. Um, and I and I, that's why I think a lot of the stuff, like a lot of the stuff we we've, we've learned. Um, like I learned the shark bite thing seven eight years ago, and I went out and bought a bunch of them because I thought they were so good. When I mm -hmm. saw my plumber use them, and mm -hmm. he'd been using them forever. You know. So, um, what other tips do you guys have? Off, anything off the top of your heads? I've got another one, but I don't want to monopolize. <laughs> well, we got uh, the five gallon bucket tip yep, yep. for keeping so you know you get a couple of five gallon buckets locked together and you just cannot like i don't care how big and strong you are it's you're a, not getting them it's apart a bitch. Yeah, it sucks <laughs> we got five gallon buckets so, right here. they usually just go in the dumpster, dumpster dump dump trail, yeah, whatever's on site uh, just get rid of them so we picked this we picked this up um we picked this up from our painters yep and basically they store a bunch of five gallon buckets because they're always using them they're spraying mm. and stuff like that yep, tile setters too but and like shazam that's it. He's a cardboard. A strip of cardboard That's in there. Slick. Keeps him from it's walking enough up. to just. I was wondering why you were cutting that up. It's to break the seam of the water or the airlock or something, right? Yeah, the airlock. It air just lock, works. Because right? the air gets in there and, and creates a vacuum and then you can't get them apart and that vacuum's stronger than you. <laughs> 
So that's really that's simple really trick, cool. but that's makes a big cool. difference. That's very cool. That's awesome. Like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, okay. while we're talking about painters, I actually learned something from my painter probably about four or five years ago. We were out having a beer after a job and we were talking about different things. And my painter analyzes everything. It's actually a good thing to do if you're in business, right? Mm -hmm. So he had a crew of six guys and uh, we were working in this big colonial house here in Concord. And he basically took over the whole garage and they had five gallon buckets and paint cans and you know, kits, they call them kits with their brushes in them and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And, you know, brushes were soaking over there and rollers were wrapped up in tin foil over there. And he had all these tips that the painters use. And he was telling me, he said, you know, um, I never thought about labor and wasted time. And I'm like, well, what do you mean? And he says, well, um, every morning we would show up at 7 a.m., all six of us, and we would all clean our brushes from the night before, you know, prep them, spin them, and then pour a kit, get a kit going. And he says, before you know it, a half hour is gone. So that's six guys, half hour, that's three hours. Mm -hmm. Nothing's happened yet. No work, no billable work has happened. Mm -hmm. Says at the end of the day, we would all clean our brushes, soak them, do what we gotta do, close the paint, prep everything, put the ladders down. Another half an hour, unbillable time, no work being done on the house. He said, so what I started doing is I hired one guy to come an hour early. One guy shows up at six, or I think they started at eight, so this guy showed up at seven, and one guy worked till four instead of three. Mm -hmm. So instead of, what did I say, three hours in the morning mm -hmm. and three yep. hours, in, so instead of losing six hours of unbillable time a day, he lost two mm -hmm. a day. So we went from six hours to two hours, right. incredibly efficient. And he said his bottom line went up. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, that's, that's genius. Because cool. what happens in the morning? You shoot shit, you're talking about this, what'd you right. do last exactly. night, oh my God, yep. someone's having a butt, someone's running to the porta potty you know, they're doing all these things, mm -hmm. nothing's happening. So yeah. this one guy would show up and get everybody ready, all kits would be ready when they showed up. That's I thought that was cool an idea. awesome tip. Yeah, that's pretty cool yeah. And I've kind of employed that when I've worked with bigger groups, I'm a smaller remodeler, and, and but if I'm working with a group of guys and we're teaming up on something, mm -hmm. I try to anticipate that and have, you know, logistically have one guy show up early and maybe get stuff ready. Mm -hmm. might, might even be me. But I, I was usually, yeah, for me, technique. running my company, I would always, especially if I had a crew with me that day or whoever was coming that day, I would get there a half hour, 45 minutes early and just prep. The biggest thing was, was getting, especially if, uh, you know, being mobile contractors, we're setting up, breaking down. Um, I'd get there, set up the minor saw, table saw, workbenches, whatever it was, get everything prepped. So when the guys would show up, Delisle or whoever, and they would just get right to work. Mm -hmm. yeah. And there was no downtime. So yeah, there's when something I was, to uh, When I was apprenticing, I, I ate, that was my job. Mm -hmm. um, I would show up and I would set all the tools up ahead of time. And then like the, the boss would show up and you just start working, start cutting right off the bat. Yeah. I'd, be, I'd be exhausted, sweat, you know. <laughs> like the talent. Was it, yeah. tired, right? was it time to break yet? <laughs> oh man. Mike, what about another tip? Uh, how about communication on a job site? That's really big. And one of the things we have is walkie talkies. Um, there's plenty of them out there. I carry a different brand in my truck what and um, carry? Uh, honestly it was off the shelf at the box yeah. store. We were on the job and we were having issues with communication. Um, at lunchtime I ran out, grabbed some supplies nice. I needed and grabbed a set of walkie talkies and now they just stay in there. How do those work? Are they like the Nextel, um, the old Nextel phones? Are they like you hear that like annoying beep every once in a while, or is it? How does it? It was an annoying beep, but yes, uh, some of them I have seen that they beep first and then you speak. Uh -huh. Yeah, I think I think these do have a beep, um, and they vibe. These vibrate. These are dual. Oh, that's cool. That's nice. That's, nice. Nice. that's really nice. Yeah. So it does Especially have a little if you're beep. One of those crazy people that's not too bad. Yeah. Um, the Nextel is so loud. The next cell was extremely loud. I used these just like, I think it was Tuesday. Tuesday, uh, Brian and I were working up in, in, on Beacon Street in Newton, and uh, I was on the third floor. Brian ran down to get uh, Vicor tape. We were putting in windows, and he was taping some seams. And just as he left and got out of his shot, I shot the last nail on the finish gun, and it locked out, and I went, oh. And I reached in my bag, and I was out of nails. I looked in the box, box empty on the floor. I was like, oh, man, I'm out of nails. And I'm, I'm looking out the window and I'll see him. I'm three, four floors up. He's around the corner where the trailer was, but we had these. So I called them and I'm like, hey, Brian, I need some finished nails for the gun. And um, he didn't answer me the first time. I called him the second time, then he answered me, but he doesn't like these. Because <laughs> uh, he's a little more accountable, but, uh, but he answered me and it saved me a trip going down three flights. Yeah. Absolutely. And it's, a, it's I think it's a great way to, um, you know, I, I, or Brian a second trip. <laughs> yeah, or a second trip. But I also think it's a well, great yeah. it's a great thing for uh, commercial job sites. So Stan yep. Stan does a lot of work with us, mm -hmm. and he uses these 
uh, he's a project executive, big company in Boston. So he's in his trailer and he's calling guys on the first, second, third floor, fifth, tenth floor. And it's got like a mile radius. They work great. He loves yeah. them. So you can have multiple channels on it? or there's, multiple? I think there's 20 or 30 channels. Oh, no kidding. So Stan yeah. actually um, reviewed these for us on the site. And then I, I have a few. He has a few. And um, he says he's still using them. He loves That's them. Cool. He went out and bought That's more. Nice. That's very oh, cool. Nice. Yeah. So anyway, radios are cool. Communication. Another great spot for radios is when you're trying to find what breaker you're on. Because yes. a lot of times somebody's down in the basement, you're not going to get cell phone mm -hmm. reception. Right. Mm -hmm. But walkie talkies That's are still a really good yeah. point. Yeah. Right. So yeah. right. That's huge. That's cool. Right. All right, Chris, what else? I um, uh, learned an interesting tip from you guys. <laughs> Conquer Carpenter, it's this website that writes about really cool stuff. It's actually one of Rob's tips, but uh, I'm taking over because Rob's been talking so much. So, um, so the... Uh, you don't say. You write writing the name of the in the in the model of the paint that of in the room on the back of a of, of a plate, a switch plate or outlet. That's brilliant. Such a brilliant yes. idea. So here we got Ben Ben Moore Cement Four, I think. Uh, it's cool. I'm one stealing that. One question I have: um, Do you have to be careful about the it? So as I see a little bit, we just we just set this up this morning to prep for this, but. You know, if I hold this up, I can sit, kind of see through it. So, you do. yeah. So, what do you do? Well, when when it's on the wall, you don't see through it. So oh, it's right. fine. Good so point. it's fine. Good point. Um, I picked it up from a uh, a decorator that was working on the job site, and she was pulling off the light plate one day, and I was like, "Do you want me to do that for you? Is there something wrong with the light plate?" It was my job. I was like, "What is she doing with the light plates?" Mm -hmm. And she's like, "I'm just going to write the name of the paint on the back of the plate because I always lose the name, and so the clients throw the pen away, or they don't record it." Mm -hmm. um, so she says the main switch in every room, she writes it on the back of the plate. Usually a switch plate. Yep. Um, nice. Double or triple switch plate is better because it gives you more room. Right, right. And you can use the trim color, the accent color. You got everything. Ground color. You can I, put the formula I'm, in. I'm, I'm, thinking, yeah. I'm thinking Ethan wants to make a kit. <laughs> um, one thing you could do if you want to avoid that bleed through is just a piece of masking tape, like regular white masking tape. Oh, yeah. That would help prevent that. Mm -hmm. So that's a thought. Yeah, that's cool. a good thought. Yeah. Yeah. What other, pla uh, painting, painting, what other painting tips have you picked up from painters? Um, actually, I was just thinking about one. Um, so. If you have to like, if you're gonna recoat something like same day, and you want to wrap up your brush, you know, you can wrap it up with some tin foil. That was my go-to for a long time. Plastic wrap doesn't usually work too well, um, but I, I, I heard it from somebody. I don't remember who, but they're like, if you wear gloves while you're painting, which I tend to do, just because I like keeping my hands of clean. You do. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Nitrous. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I got my nails did, you know. Um, <laughs> but what I like to do is, uh, you just take the glove, you hold, you grab the brush by the by like the ferrule with the brush point in your hand and you just pull the glove off okay. over the brush and then mm -hmm. just wrap it up and put a piece of tape on it. What a Done. great idea. I taught you that. <laughs> Did you? Uh, Did you? No, I didn't. <laughs> That's a great idea. You no, it's handy. Put it's your great. rollers or brushes in the freezer? Well, yeah, I, I used to no, do that all the time. I picked that tip up from a painter a long time ago. Yeah. Uh, plastic, uh, yeah, saran wrap. Yeah. Saran wrap or tin foil. Mm -hmm. Ziploc in bags, yeah. too. I've thrown whole, whole brushes in like a, in a, yep. in a freezer size Ziploc bag. I've yep. done that. Just to keep it for you a know, little bit. It's funny, professional painters, you know, they usually their, their go to brush is pretty clean, but a lot of their brushes, they don't look great. No. Mm. no. They're, they're dealing with paint well, all day long. My brushes are spotless. The ferrules are a mess, the handles are kind of a mess. The bristles are good. Are good. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I have they don't screw around with cleaning the stuff that doesn't matter. Is, you know? um, yeah, I, I, yeah, I've often wondered um, why it's all, just because they're dealing with so much paint. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, well, that, and they usually have a crew of like eight guys, you know, and seven of them probably don't care too much. They don't care. Well, <laughs> well you're only, I, I say this all the time. You're only as good as your weakest link. Yeah. If you've got a knucklehead on your job site, on your crew, and mm -hmm. he doesn't care. Then you'll be re you'll be fixing tools, you'll be replacing parts, you'll be looking for missing stuff, and it mm -hmm. happens all the time. True, because they're you know they're an hourly employee and they don't care. It's not yep. their business. Yep. They don't care. They don't have pride in what they do, and that's a shame in the in the trades a little bit. Um, so that's it for the video. I hope you liked it, enjoyed it. It was different from what we normally do. Please leave us a comment. We'd love to know what you think. If you enjoyed it, give us a thumbs up, hit that notification button, and don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you next time. Thanks.